fateful findings is the Neil Breen mega smash hit that broke all the rules by giving us 100 minutes of movie where almost nothing happens. It all starts in a storage facility. What's special about it? Who the hell knows, it never comes up. Now we're back in the past where these stupid kids find a magic pancake. Inside the pancake is a box and inside the box is a black cube. If you're confused, don't worry. None of this is ever explained. It must mean something. It's buried treasure. One, it's a rock in a box. It doesn't mean sh**. Two, it wasn't fucking buried. It was inside a magical pancake. There's a difference. You can't leave the box empty. It's bad luck. Yes, you can. And no, it's not. For these annoying little kids, finding an ugly rock is the most exciting thing that's ever happened to them and the only thing worthy of going in her sad little journal. It's a magical day. Way to stay in the lines, idiot. So anyways, they're in a hurry. We're gonna be late. We're gonna miss the plane. So they drive to the airport as slowly as possible. We're now in the present, and even though we're only five minutes into the movie, I'm already completely lost. First, this definitely isn't a crosswalk. It's obviously a parking lot, and none of those people are there. So he takes this realistic looking crosswalk that's blocked by a fucking tree on a curbed median, and then somehow, drops his phone while he's talking on it. Dylan, what's going on? Talk to me. Thankfully, he gets taken out by two and a half tons of karma. <sighs> and these very helpful people suddenly exist again. It's the Rolls Royce that hit him. I saw it. I'm a witness. Really, jackass? Are you sure it was the Rolls Royce? Fucking idiot. Call 911. Call 911. Unfortunately, he's saved by the weirdest paramedics who not only wear jeans and chef shirts, but instead of an ambulance gurney, they bring a full hospital bed. I don't know how they're supposed to get that in the ambulance, but while they may be unorthodox, they make up for it with their ability to put on an oxygen mask. Yep, that's definitely how it goes. They then take him to the worst hospital you will ever see. Not only is this mask meant to treat asthma, and this is upside down and backwards, but they're both fucking pointless because his mouth and nose are both completely blocked by bandages. I get that face injuries can be rough, but breathing is usually more important. And if that's not bad enough, all the oxygen tanks are empty anyways. How is this a hospital? Even the doctors here are terrible, and there's no way they've been to medical school. He's in critical condition. After that brilliant analysis, this random doctor just walks in. He isn't my patient. And comes up with a full diagnosis just by checking his pulse. He is very weak, semi-comatose. It's very serious. Semi-comatose would mean he's awake right now. You guys need to get your shit together because they're the worst doctors in the world who are wrong about everything. He wakes up the second they leave and is ready to go home. He takes out his IV lines, which turn out to just be oxygen tubing taped to his fucking wrists. This is the worst case of malpractice I have ever seen. 
He then walks all the way home, dressed like a mummy in a hospital gown. When he gets home, he goes straight to the shower and his wife just walks in there with him, fully clothed, like that's a normal thing to do. I think this is supposed to be sweet, but it's not. It's really f***ing awkward and disgusting. The next day, the lady who isn't even his doctor He isn't my patient. is checking up on him for some reason, and his wife tells her just how great he's doing. He seems to be fine. The rest of this movie is all over the place, and at the same time, almost nothing happens. I feel like something's inside me. So I'm going to speed through all the subplots, which is everything, as I refuse to believe any of this sh** could ever be considered a main plot. This is Jim and Amy. Can I offer you a drink? Their only purpose is to waste everyone's time with pointless bullshit. We don't have sex anymore. Do you realize that? My office at the bank is having major problems. My back is killing me. I'm very busy. On one hand, that all sounds like bullshit. But on the other, nobody fucking cares. You bastard! I think we're supposed to not like him, but she is just so much worse. You would rather be drunk in here than with me? Yes, lady, everyone would. It's a Ferrari and you're fucking terrible. Screw you. Then they all have dinner together, even though it's clearly the middle of the day and this guy is quickly becoming my favorite. He's the only one with the balls to tell it like it is. I have this really interesting project about elephants in Africa. I'm sure Dylan doesn't want to hear about that now. I want to hear about our project. Bullshit. Nobody wants to hear about the fucking elephants in Africa. And while he's awesome, she's just terrible. I'm sorry. What the hell are you talking about? I let you down. He doesn't even know. You didn't let me down. Whatever, lady. He has no time for your shit. I'm not running away. He's a man of passion that will not be brought down. <laughs> That's the little rapscallion I know. Their story comes to an end when she decides she's going to shoot his Ferrari for some reason. I'm gonna shoot this damn car up full of holes. But luckily, she misses and just kills him. No, no! Don't worry, she's got this all planned out get as much of her fingerprints as possible on everything and then claim it was suicide. He killed himself! He killed himself! It's perfectly normal for a right-handed man to shoot himself in the left side of the neck. It's also perfectly normal to wipe a dead person's blood all over yourself. How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? Truly the most powerful moment in cinematic history. Goodbye, my friend. This is their daughter, Allie. When she's not trying to be a fucking buzzkill and talk about stupid elephants. Really interesting project about elephants in Africa. She's trying to seduce him. Dylan. And with a body like that, who can blame her? But when she tries to take a bath in his disgusting bathtub, that's where he draws the line. Please stop. Please don't do it anymore. You can't do this. Please don't do it anymore. The writing in this movie is just top notch. You can't do this anymore. Are you going to stop? At that moment, she realizes this movie just 
fucked up any chance of a legit acting career. Anyways, he then blames his wife for Allie's mental problems. Was that Allie? You should know, you're the one who invited her over here. Remember? So she calls Amy and wonders if she could kindly ask her daughter to stop trying to f her husband. I'll tell her never to do it again. That doesn't work, and there is something terribly wrong with her. We are given zero setup or context as he goes from teleporting through doors to just suddenly being in his living room yelling at her. You cannot come here again. But I thought you liked when I came here. It's definitely his fault for being far too subtle. Please stop. Please don't do it anymore. You can't do this. Please don't do it anymore. You can't do this anymore. Are you going to stop? No, I don't like it. Go now. You cannot come here. You've got to go. While she contemplates what he's trying to tell her, she drops the bombshell. You know he didn't kill himself. She killed him. I saw her. No shit. If you're wondering what comes of all of this, then the joke's on you because none of it is ever mentioned again. This is his wife who's an overdramatic pain in the ass. My job sucks. I don't like the people I work with. Join the fucking club, lady. Her entire role in the movie is to become addicted to his pain medication. Give us the world's dumbest love scenes. then die of an overdose while he's out having an affair. This is Leah, the shitty doctor from the hospital. He isn't my patient. When they have a barbecue, she just randomly shows up uninvited. The doctor at the hospital. Then the shocking twist, she's not just a terrible doctor that crashes pool parties, but she's the little girl from the beginning. It's a magical day. You're probably wondering how that's possible since he's now 20 years older than her. Well, tough shit. The movie never explains anything, so why would it start now? So they're both terrible people and begin having an affair. I fell in love with you that day when we were walking in the forest and finding the black cube. Finding a black rock is truly a momentous occasion. You're everything I've ever wanted. That is the saddest thing I have ever heard. His wife dying was super convenient and she moves in the next day. If you're wondering just how strong his game is and why women can't resist him, check this out. Talk about a ladies' man. So now, this not suspicious at all looking guy uses hydrogen peroxide to kidnap her as awkwardly as possible. Luckily, he has elite detective skills and finds a note explaining where to take her that the kidnapper dropped right next to her purse. So he follows the note and does the perfectly normal thing of teleporting into the trailer, freeing her. It's Dylan. And then tying her up again. I'm gonna put the gag back in. Before teleporting out together. Somehow, None of this is ever mentioned again. Now for his side plot. He's a successful writer, but decides that's not dumb enough. So now he does this. I've been hacking into government and corporate international secrets. Instead of anyone telling him that's ridiculous and quit being stupid, they all just go along with it. 
Apparently, he's uncovered a lot of really vague things. Corporate and government, cheating, lying, and hypocrisy. And gives a speech in front of a terrible green screen. But first, you need to know how awesome he is. I have discovered more information than any hacker ever has, ever. Just hearing his insane rambling. What I have found will shock you. Here are the files and supporting documents. Supporting truths, the factual documents. Makes these six people commit suicide. Except for this guy who shoots himself in the f***ing chin, which means he'll go to prison and be deformed for life. <laughs> then, to top it all off, a sniper tries to take him out using MS Paint or some sh**, but mysteriously falls over dead. And, you guessed it, it is never explained at all. We now have all the truths. The final plot is one I just made up, but I'm pretty sure it's true. The only way any of this makes any sense is if he's just crazy as f and none of it actually happened. The first clue is the carpet in the hospital. Not only is it really f***ing stupid to have a hospital room carpeted, but it's the exact same carpet as at his house. Then we see his psychotherapist, which is a clue by itself. But he also tells him, I'm feeling less stable. And stops taking his psych meds. He stopped taking his meds. During this therapy session, the therapist suit just magically changes. What is it? He then sees a second psychotherapist, only there's no way she's licensed because her room is a fucking broom closet and she's 400 years old. Later in the movie, she just fucking disappears. I don't know if that's because she's not real or she just died of old age. Either way, it's really f***ing weird. There's all that computer hacking nonsense. It's gonna change the world as we know it. That he claims he's always doing, but none of his computers are ever turned on. Then he drives out to the middle of the desert to yell at a wooden f***ing box. Should I be afraid? But I'm sure a theory where any of this makes any sense is asking far too much from a director who made up a bunch of fake companies to add to the credits in order to make his movie seem more legitimate. But was also such a narcissist that he just couldn't stand the thought of Eats and Eats getting credit for craft services. 